Hello and welcome to another edition of Only in Illinois, your weekly video recap from Reboot Illinois. I'm Madeline Dubeck here with Matt Dietrich and we have one final round of polling that we commissioned this week that we thought we'd talk in a little bit more detail about. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, you know, we've been following these races with polling since June and we're finally starting to see some pretty interesting shifts occur. Uh, so let's talk about the governor's race for a bit. Okay. From September to October we saw uh, in, in our September poll Bruce Rauner was up by eight percentage points. Now Pat Quinn is up by four percentage points. Right. And this was the fourth poll that we've taken going back to June. We did one in early June, late July. Um, and those polls actually had Bruce Rauner with double digit leads over Pat Quinn. It was pretty significant. Yeah, so the momentum is clearly shifting here, mm -hmm. although four percentage points is not a lot, and we've got a lot happening in the last month here, and we should point out that the margin of error is plus or minus three percentage points, so this is kind of up for grabs, but this is a Democratic-leaning state still. Uh, Democrats have a much better, more organized, more vaunted get-out-the-vote effort, and so I would think that those are some pretty key pretty key points in the final weeks here but we've got three more debates right uh, and lots of stuff still happening with the neighborhood recovery initiative the anti-violence program Republicans are trying to make some political hay with that um, but if you if you look deeper into the numbers and the kind of demographic breakdowns we noticed a couple of other key things one of them being in the, the city breakdown. Right. Yeah, in the city of Chicago, in our most recent poll this week, um, Bruce Rauner had only 14% of the votes among our Chicago respondents compared to 62% for Pat Quinn. That's extremely significant for Rauner. It's extremely bad news for, for Rauner, actually. If you go back to 2010, when Bill Brady faced Pat Quinn, Bill Brady won, and, and every region of the state except for Cook County and specifically in Chicago. Now the benchmark for Republican candidates who are running statewide in Illinois is that you have to win 20 percent of the city of Chicago vote. In Bill Brady's case in 2010 he won 17 percent of the Chicago vote. He lost the election by just under 32,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Had Bill Brady received 22% of the city of Chicago vote. Keep in mind that one percentage point is about 6,900 votes. Had he received 22% in Chicago, in Chicago right. the city of Chicago, had he received 22%, he would have won, uh, he would have had about, uh, well, 3, that would have, vote lead yeah, he would have had about a 3,000 point victory. He would have, in, in, uh, he lost by, you know, 32,000. Uh, this is why you see, for example, a lot, you know, not so much lately, but I'm sure it's still going on. We've seen Bruce Rauner make a very concerted effort, in particular, to reach out to some African American neighborhoods in the city of Chicago. Uh, he's trying to build that, build that support within the city of Chicago. Likewise, we also noticed in the polling this week that women are now breaking much more strongly toward Pat Quinn than Bruce Rauner, and coincidentally or not. Uh, Bruce Rauner had an event geared toward women this week and uh, we've been seeing evidence of ads and mailers from Diana Rauner, his wife, uh, who promotes herself as a Democrat, mm -hmm. popping up quite a bit more again. So we see that things are very fluid. Uh, what we're seeing is probably the same thing that campaigns are seeing in their own internal polling right. and they're trying to respond to that. And, and actually we had in our previous three polls, it was always pretty consistent. Uh, Quinn had 36 to 39 percent of the female vote versus Rauner having 43, 44. In, in our poll this week it was um, Bruce Completely Rauner flipped. with 36 and Pat Quinn with 44 percent uh, among female respondents. Now, we also uh, asked a little bit, a couple of different questions this time where there also was another interesting flip, and that is um, in separate groups of voters, but the same, you know, statewide poll, 
we asked people which of the candidates for governor do you trust more? Right. And what and, happened? And here we had a strange flip flop too because we uh, had a poll that put uh, Quinn ahead of Rauner by four percentage points. Then when we when you ask for whom you would vote if it were today. At, right. And then when we asked who do you consider more, more trustworthy, trustworthy, the results were just the opposite. 44% uh, considered Rauner the more trustworthy. And 40% went for Quinn as the most trustworthy. So I'm not sure what that says about Illinoisans. Maybe how we vote is a bit different than how we judge our, put our trust in people. Or at the very least, things are really fluid right now and this is the evidence of the key time in the race and you know anything can happen in the next right. remaining few weeks. And of course one thing that we always emphasize when we do our polling is this isn't a predictor of what's going to happen on November 4th. It's a snapshot in time but one thing that it is a good indicator of is how effective are the candidates at this moment in getting their messages out to the electorate. And I think what we've seen here, and certainly if you've watched any television lately or been on the internet, you've seen plenty of advertising from both these candidates. And what we are seeing, I think, in these poll numbers is that the Quinn campaign is beginning to really get its message across. Rauner had such a head start. He had such a financial head start. He's been advertising against Quinn since back during the primary. And now we're starting to see things even up. Right. And perhaps that Quinn's at the moment doing a better job of defining Rauner than the opposite. All right, so another really fascinating race, the kind of the bottom of the statewide ballot, is the treasurer's race between Tom Cross, the Republican who led the House Republicans for many years, versus Mike Frericks from the Champaign area, who's a state senator for seven or eight years or so. And that race is also neck and neck, one percentage point difference. Uh, and so with uh, Cross leading by one percentage point, both of them have just started advertising this week for right. the first time on television in the campaign. Uh, Frerichs is, is uh, using his height, which is he's six, 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 eight. Eight, six nine. Um, in a, a clever ad that takes advantage of that and talks about he, he's the guy who can measure up and, and uh, make a difference in Illinois. Cross is uh, demonstrating or, or um, promoting his independence as a Republican, pointing out some votes that he's taken um, that you wouldn't stereotypically attach to a Republican. I think the same-sex marriage being probably the foremost among them. Right. So, uh, that's going to be a fascinating one to watch in the remaining weeks as well. And um, uh, outside of all of that, we want to remind everybody that we have lots of great tools for you to really make up your mind on the key issues in Illinois. Uh, our election scorecards are on our website at RebootIllinois.com. Uh, those give you side-by-side -side comparisons on a variety of issues for all of the statewide races. We've got a questionnaire that we did with the Better Government Association where you can read what the candidates had to say at a little bit longer length in their own words and uh, lots more coverage of who's endorsing whom and who's gotten money from whom. So we've put out as many tools as we can manage for you to really take a good look at these races and make an informed decision. So please make sure you do that. That's about it for this week. We'll catch you on another edition of Only in Illinois. Thanks for watching.